Okay, let's do this. Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. This video is going to be the last one of my trip series from Slovenia. So, we're going to dig deep into the science of um, rope climbing on rock today. And to do so, I have prepared a little comparative analysis of two different, different climbers on the same route. The route is um, the route called Hobbit. It's a 7C in the magnificent crag of Mishapetch in Osp. And we will have two different climbers on the same route, on, namely on this route, and they both are going to send the route. And we are going to let them climb in parallel. I edited the video in such a way that they both start at the same time point on the, let's say, start hold. And it's a pretty steep, short, powerful climb, a little bit of power endur endurance involved here. And then there come quite a few rests and then you have to climb a little, let's say, um, demanding exit. And yeah, what we are going to do is we are going to compare both climbing styles of these climbers. We're going to look at who climbs faster, who climbs more accurate, um, the different clipping positions, the breathing. Um, also, one climber is a little bit taller and one climber is shorter. They, um, by the way, they are uh, both close friends of mine and they <laughs> agreed that I can use this footage we've made for this video. So, yeah, they will be watching as well. We will see different solutions, we will see knee bars, we will see who is able to let his feet go and if it's a good thing or if it's a bad thing, do they have different betas and stuff like that. So I would see we jump right into it, let's go! This is the wall, this is the this is the Mishapetch wall, on the, especially on the left side here. And as we can see, um, the first climber in the black trousers is already at the start of the route, clips the first straw and here in the right corner, we get the second climber um, added into the video. The left one is a little bit in the time lapse so that we can get them starting at the same um, time point. Now they're getting into the position, we see good focus in the right climber, good breathing, and here we go. So here we can see the right climber is really focused, he really instantly knows what he's doing. The left climber is a little bit slower here. Seems a little bit nervous, a little bit mm, not so not so sure about what he's doing, and that's why the right climber is now about one move ahead, I would say. You can see he's clipping here a little bit earlier than the left climber, and already gets his hand into the next um, good hold. And look, take a look at the feet here at this clipping position. They have different footholds here. This is due to the different body size, I would say. And now they almost move um, simultaneously into the crux sequence where they have two different betas, check it out. This one here is um, right climber here goes here with the right hand and the left climber goes here with the left hand and left the left climber, the climber in back, as you may saw, lets his feet go here two times and the right climber, as you see, um, did not let his feet go at all. And he was, but he was a little bit slower than the left climber, and it seemed to be really close here. And what you can see here as well is the different rest positions. The, the right climber rests a little bit lower than the left one, and we will see if we can find a reason for that. Um, as you can see, um, if you're quite short, like the left climber is, you can get here a, ri a really good heel hook into your left. Um, foot and the right climber has to stand on his toes in this rest position which makes it a little bit uncomfortable for the right climber and as you can see his body size is just not made for this rest which is why he rests here only shortly um, the left climber was here in time lapse a little bit and so they start again simultaneously into the next move which is a huge crossover for which they have almost the same beta as you can see and now they will try to get this um, knee bar into the hole which makes up a quite comfortable resting position I would say clipping almost simultaneously and yeah now they have the knee bar rest make this in such way that they start out almost simultaneously again which you can see here and take a closer look at what they're doing at the exit 
they seem to be not so 100% sure what they are doing which makes it appear like the exit is actually pretty close by both, both of the climbers in, in both cases. So this should also teach us a lesson, always um, take a very close look at the exit of a route, at the end of a route, because here you're going to be very pumped, you're going to be already tired and here you need the right beta definitely. Right climber is already finished. As a little side fact by the way, the right climber in blue was approximately uh, one minute faster overall than the left climber and the climber in black which finishes now which is mainly due to different rest times the, the black climber rested a lot more, a lot longer than the blue climber Alright, so what we're going to do next is I'm going to show you the footage one more time and I'm trying to um, emphasize a little bit some details, some highlights so to say which um, came to my attention when I watched the comparison and to show that to you so that, so that you can a little bit relate to what I'm thinking about it and yeah, I'm going to play it one more time here something which I want to mention here at first is that the climber in blue, the right climber, the taller guy has already at the beginning a really nice focus you can see in his breathing he tries to fill his body already up with oxygen because he knows there is going to be an anaerobic stress on his body and this is why he breathes really really calm really deep breath okay to get the oxygen in and he is really especially at the beginning i'm going to stop that here for you um, especially at the beginning he knows exactly what he's doing and that this is like like presenting a presentation okay if you learn the first sentence um, in such way so that you have it in your mind 100% sure you know what you will say then it's easier to um, kind of get into the presentation okay and to build the following sentences and it's the same thing with climbing a little bit if you know the first three four moves 100% you 100% sure what you have to do and you can climb them quite fast then you will have an easier time to um, make the following moves okay so let's check that out in, in, on the contrary the left climber here the one in the, in the black trousers is not so sure what he's doing and this is why he's at only at the first five moves he's already one move behind the right climber okay because he was a little bit slower and the right climber can here clip um, significantly earlier and what is interesting next is the clipping position I'm going to stop that for you one more time here the clipping positions are quite different if you take a closer look at the um, different climbers the the guy in the blue trousers has here a little bit of an advantage because he he can put his feet at a lower level at two very good footholds that are quite low but the other guy in the black trousers is a little bit shorter and this is why he cannot use these holds these footholds okay to clip the next draw and which is why he has to use some different footholds we can check this out here as you can see again the blue climber is here a solid bit faster than the um, guy in the black trousers and now something interesting happens because the crux starts actually they both climb into the crux and already at the first move of the crux which goes to this far um, away pinch the climber in the black trouser was a little bit faster for some reason than the blue one and this is why he he almost caught up he, he almost catched up to the to the um, guy in the blue trousers here already okay and we're going to see that in the crux the guy in the black trousers is much faster than the guy in the blue trousers this is also partly because the, guy, the climber in the right corner has a different beta than the other guy and the climber in the left corner and this is actually why he has to do one more move I counted the moves of the crux and I found out the guy in the left corner only has to do five moves as on the contrary the guy in the blue trousers has to do six moves and it's one move more which of course costs some time and this is why the guy in the black trousers um, overtakes the guy in the blue trousers in the crux okay another thing that you should notice in the crux is that the left climber lets his feet go two times and this is something that is um, supposed to be quite inefficient okay because if you can you should always aim to keep your feet on the wall because when you let go of your feet it of course takes a lot of of upper body strength and finger strength to hold yourself still on the rock and this is something the uh, right climber does better because he 
never lets go of his feet. Um, but even though the crux looks quite close um, in his case, so it was a, a close, he was pretty close to the fall, I would say. And afterwards, um, when the crux is finished, then we will see another difference in strategy here because the blue climber will rest instantly and the black climber does two, three more moves instantly to climb into the medium, into the, into the middle rest. There are three rests in this route, a little bit lower one, this is where the blue climber rests, the medium one, which is where the black climber rests, and then there is the big knee bar hole where both of them rest one more time, okay, before the exit. And this is another um, difference in strategy here. The blue climber rests earlier and more into the lower rest and the black climber rests into the medium rest. And we will see why, because they figured out different nice rest positions. But let's watch the clip. So yeah, as you can see here, they are still the same. And now the difference in beta um, starts. And this is the first time the black climber lets his feet go. And here we have the second time. He can afford it, he has a lot of upper body strength, as it seems. And here a really cool smooth from the right climber. And as you can see the black climber here, after this clipping, he overtook the blue climber here. Made two, mo two more moves into this medium rest here, while the blue climber still is in the lower rest. And decides to make these, these same two moves, I think, in a moment now. The left climber is here a little bit in the time lapse. He actually rested quite a long time in this rest. And I've made this in such a way that they both simultaneously climb out of the rest again. And what you can see here, I already pointed this out, but the left climber has a lot better resting position in this rest than the right climber, which is partly due to his body size. He's a little bit shorter and this is why he has an easier time to place this hook, this hook with the left foot um, correctly and in such a way that it really helps him to um, get some stress out of his hands, okay, to get some oxygen back in and this kind of stuff. Alright, and now they both do this, this huge crossover here into the big hole where they make their knee bars, where they rest one more time. and. There is actually no major difference here, apart from that that the black climber rests a lot longer in here than the blue climber, which you might be able to see in the time lapse. I had to time lapse him pretty much, and the blue climber not so much because he didn't rest so long. And now they simultaneously climb out of the rest, and here again, I'm going to stop because then you can take a closer look afterwards. The end of a route is, of course at least as important as the beginning of the route, okay? Because here you are already exhausted, your arms are already pumped, you don't have your 100% power like you have it in the beginning. So you should also know your, especially the end of a route, 100%. You should have it in your mind, you should be able to repeat the moves blindly, okay? Because, as I said, you need, to f you need to be fast up there, because you're already tired and otherwise, if you're hesitating for too long, you will going to fall off. And as you will see, both climbers actually have here some uncertainties. They are not 100% sure what they are doing. Luckily, they both stick it, because it's also not such, an, not such a hard terrain up there anymore. But if it would be uh, actual crux, this would be, mm, this can be a heartbreaker, okay? So you need to be 100% sure what you're doing, especially in the last few meters. Let's check it out. Mm -hmm. Some hesitation here on the black side and uh, on the blue side as well. Yeah, so that's it basically. I hope you got something out of this video. I hope it wasn't too long and it wasn't too too much details. If you're a climbing enthusiast, I think you got something out of this video and if you did, give it a like. Tell me what you think about this kind of videos. Shall I do them more or are you getting boring, bored by that? I think this is always quite interesting to get into some deep um, strategy for climbing and stuff. Because when we see someone climb a route, we don't really know or we don't really want to think about what actually is behind the success or the failure in sometimes, yeah? So 
there are a lot of factors. As I stated in the previous video, there are a lot of different factors which contribute to climb, climbing performance. And I like to do these videos to kind of analyze why something has gone wrong, has gone wrong, or why something worked. And I hope you can um, you like that as well. If you do, please tell me in the comments down below. And thanks for watching. See you guys in the next episode.